Sandra Cisneros is a highly acclaimed Mexican-American author, best known for her works that explore the complexities of identity, culture, and society. In Eleven, one of her most celebrated short stories, Cisneros delved into the emotional landscape of a young girl navigating the challenge of adolescence. The story is a vivid and evocative portrayal of the experience of growing up and the struggles that come with it, as well as the reminder that we all cover the years that came before us. This story is read and recorded by the advanced reading and writing students of the Providence Public Libraries ESL program. We hope you all enjoy it. What they don't understand about our days and what they never tell you is that when you are 11, you are also 10 and 9 and 8 and 7 and 6 and 5 and 4 and 3 and 2 and 1. And when you wake up on your 11th birthday, you accept to feel 11, but you don't. You open your eyes and everything's just like yesterday, only it's today. And you don't feel 11 at all. You feel like you are still 10 and you are underneath the yard that makes you 11. Like some days you might say something stupid and that's the part of you that's still 10. Or maybe some days you might need to sit on your mama's lap because you're scared. And that's a part of you that's 5. And maybe one day when you are grown up, maybe you will need to cry like you're 3. And that's okay. That's what I tell mama when she said I need to cry. Maybe she's feeling through it. Because the way you grow old is kind of like an onion or like the rings inside the tree trunk or like my little wooden dolls that fit one inside the other each year inside the next one. That's it. How big 11 years old this? You don't feel 11. Not right away. It takes a few days, weeks even, sometimes even months before to say 11 when they ask you. And you don't feel smart 11, not until you are almost 12. That's the way that it is. Only today I wish I didn't have only 11 years resting inside me like pennies in a tin band aid box. Today I wish I was 102 instead of 11. Because if I was 102, I'd have known what to say when Mrs. Price put the red sweater on my desk. I would have known how to tell her it wasn't mine instead of just sitting there with the look on my face and nothing coming out of my mouth. Who is this? Mrs. Price says, and she holds the red sweater up in the air for all the class to see. Who's? It's been sitting in the courtroom for a month. Not mine, says everybody. Not me. It has to belong to somebody, Mrs. Price keeps saying. But nobody can remember. It's an ugly sweater with a red plastic bottoms and a collar and a sleeves all stretched out like you could use it for a jump rope. It's maybe a thousand years old and even if it belonged to me, I wouldn't say so. Maybe because I'm skinny, maybe because she doesn't like me. That stupid Sylvia Saldivar says. I think it belongs to Rachel. An ugly sweater like that, all raggedy and old, but Miss Pride believes her. Mrs. Price takes the sweater and puts it right on my desk. But when I open my mouth, nothing comes out. That's not. I don't. You are not. Not mine. I finally said in a little voice. That was maybe me when I was four. Of course it's yours, Mrs. Price says. I remember you wearing it once. Because she's older and the teacher, she is right and I'm not. Not mine, not mine, not mine, but Mrs. Price is already turning to page 32 and math problem number 4. I don't know why, but all of a sudden I'm feeling sick inside, like the part of me that was three wants to come out of my eyes. 
only I squeeze them shut tight and bite down on my feet real hard. And I try to remember, today I'm 11, 11. Mama is making a cake for me for tonight. And when Papa comes home, everybody will sing happy birthday, happy birthday to you. But when the sick feeling goes away and I open my eyes, the red sweater is still sitting there like a big red mountain. I move the red sweater to the corner of my desk with my ruler. I move the pencil and books and easier as far from it as possible. I even move the chair a little to the right. No mine, no mine, no mine. In my head, I'm thinking how, how long till lunch time, how long till I can take the red sweater and throw it over the schoolyard fence or leave it hanging on a parking meter or bunch it up into a little ball and toss it in the alley. Except when match period ends, Miss Price says loud and in front of everybody, now, Rachel, that's enough. Because she sees I've shoved the red sweater to the tippy tip corner of my desk and it's hanging all over the edge like a waterfall, but I don't care. Rachel, Mrs. Price says, she says it's like she's getting mad. You put that sweater in right now and no more nonsense. But it's not. Now, Mrs. Price says, this is when I wish I wasn't eleven, because all the years inside of me, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, are pushing at the back of my eyes when I put an arm through one sleeve of the sweater that smells like cotton cheeks, and then the other arm through the other and stand there with my arms apart like if the sweater hurts me, and it does. All itchy and full of germs that aren't even mine. That's when everything I've been holding in since this morning, since when Miss Pine put the sweater on my desk, finally let's go, and all of a sudden, I am crying in front of everybody. I wish I was invisible, but I am not. I am eleven. I am in is my birthday today. I am crying like I am free in front of everybody. I put my head down on the desk and bur bury my face in my stupid clown sweater arms. My face all hot and spit coming out of my mouth because I can't stop the little animal noises from coming out of me until there aren't any more tears left in my eyes. And it's just my body shaking like when you have the hiccups. And my whole head hurts like when you drink milk too fast. But the worst part is right before the bell rings for lunch. The stupid Phyllis Lopez who is even dumber than Sylvia Saldiver, says she remembers the red sweater is hers. I take it out right away and give it to her. Only Mrs. Price pretends like everything is okay. Today, I'm 11. There is a cake Mama's making for tonight, and when Papa's come home from work, we'll eat it. There will be candles and presents, and everybody will think happy birthday, happy birthday to you, Rachel. Only it's too late. I'm 11 today. I'm 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. But I wish I was 102. I wish I was anything but 11, because I want today to be far away already. Far away like a runaway balloon, like a tiny on the sky, 
So tiny, tiny, you have to close your eyes to see it. Thank you. All right, thanks for listening. Uh, this is the advanced reading and writing class from the Providence Public Library. And um, today the introduction to the reading today was written and read for you by Natalie Gonzalez um, from Mexico. And also our readers today were Anya Farley and, and of course Natalie, uh, Maria Gutierrez Paz, Sabira Hasanova, Yan Chan Le, uh, also Margot Varavian, and Jennifer Sanchez. Great job. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yeah.